Today we're looking at the Compromise of 1850. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, I'd love to see your answer to question number five in the comments below. So today we're looking at the Compromise of 1850, and the Compromise of 1850 really focuses on California. And remember, California was part of that big area that we had gained during the Mexican-American War. But as soon as uh, we, we gain that territory, we have the California Gold Rush that takes place. And literally almost overnight, California has enough residents to apply for statehood. In fact, California completely skipped the territorial phase and immediately went to applying for statehood. But of course, here's the big issue. We got to go back a few years, back to 1820, to the, uh, the Missouri Compromise. Remember in the Missouri Compromise, Missouri entered as a slave state, Maine as a free state to maintain that balance between free and slave states. But it also drew that 3630 line as being the boundary of slavery, where, you know, slavery was allowed below that line, but not allowed above the line. But if you look at the map, California crosses, or, or the 3630 crosses directly through the center of California. So how do we allow this, get this allow California come in as a free state, because that's going to throw off the balance. If we allow it to come in as a slave state, that's going to throw off the balance, but the line goes right through the middle. So how do we solve this whole big mess? So Congress has to try to address this. And of course, the guy who steps in here is the great compromiser, Henry Clay. He's already been involved in, you know, the Missouri Compromise. He was involved in the nullification crisis. And now at age 73, battling tuberculosis, he's really in his last stand in government now. He steps in to try to work out this compromise. But he's so weak at this point, physically, that uh, a new senator jumps in, this guy from Illinois named Stephen Douglas. Uh, he comes in and really takes the lead in getting this push through uh, Congress. So this is a very hotly debated issue, of course. There's some congressmen that would you know, want to allow California to enter and just simply, you know, try to stave off civil war. There's other congressmen like John C. Calhoun, remember that guy who's been fighting for slavery all through this first half of the 1800s. He, in fact, is, you know, just about to die shortly after this. He'll be dying. He's actually too weak to even make comments during the debate. He has someone else read for him, but he's extremely against allowing California to enter as a free state. And in fact, if you look at this picture here, you can see here's Clay arguing to pass this this series of compromises, and there you can see John C. Calhoun giving him the stink eye because he does not want any of these things to be passed. But what happens in the end here to get California in? In this Compromise of 1850, there's several different parts. First, California is allowed to enter the Union as a free state, but in order to appease the South, they get something in return. They get this terrible law known as the Fugitive Slave Act, which I'll come back and talk about here in a moment. But then also the slave trade is outlawed in Washington, D.C. Not slavery, but the slave trade is outlawed. Um, also within the compromise, there's always little things that congressmen throw in there. Uh, they define new boundaries between Texas uh, and Mexico during, after the Mexican-American War. And then lastly, we have this issue of popular sovereignty. Basically, this was the idea that in these new territories of Utah and New Mexico, that uh, the people there would get to decide whether they were going to be free or slave territories. All right, so but, but the idea of popular sovereignty, the people having the vote. Now, getting back to the Fugitive Slave Act, again, one of the most awful pieces of legislation ever to be passed. What this act basically said was that escaped slaves, if they got into the North, their slave owners could come into the North and capture them and take them back into the South. And it also required Northerners to be involved, that basically they had to aid in the capture of escaped slaves. So now Northerners, you know, they were not necessarily, most of them were not morally opposed to slavery, but they saw this as them being forced to enable slavery and allow slavery to continue. Um, and then one of the worst things about this was if you were a free African American living in the North, someone could just come along and claim, hey, they were a slave, we're going to take them back to the South, and you could be kidnapped back into slavery, and that actually happened on several occasions. And so all this act really did was basically create more animosity between the North and the South, and again, it really, you know, aided in this, this terrible human rights violation that had been going on for a long time in American history. So again, this is one of the most terrible laws ever passed by Congress. But lastly, here with the Compromise of 1850, there were other problems as well, of course, with the whole issue of popular sovereignty, because they didn't really clearly define things. It didn't necessarily say, you know, who was going to get to vote. It didn't say uh, when were these votes going to take place. It didn't say who was going to organize these votes and how are these votes going to be run. And so this creates just a bunch of big questions. And actually, when we get to Bleeding Kansas, we'll see how some of these questions play out. But uh, for Southerners, they said, you know, you can't take any of these votes until the state has enough people to 
apply for statehood. And so then slavery should just be able to be there until that vote is taken. Northerners, they argued that the territorial legislatures, what government was set up in these territories, could go ahead and vote, and they could basically eliminate slavery immediately there. So again, there's this big fight over, you know, how should these territories handle this issue of slavery? So in the end, the Compromise of 1850, yes, California came in as a free state, but really all it did was it, it pushed us closer towards civil war. It stirred up issues between the North and the South and led us closer and closer to a conflict. Okay, so hopefully you learned something there, and thanks for watching.